I'm here in Las Vegas at CES 2020 and spent the whole day, most of the whole day, looking for all of the different electric vehicles, which there are a lot of them to, to check out here. And so I wanted to go through all the ones I saw and which one I think is the most important in terms of our electric future. Let's free the data. The first one I want to talk about is the Mercedes Avatar car, which is just the ultimate concept, wild, ridiculous thing that you would get here at a place like CES. This is actually in partnership with James Cameron, who is the director of Avatar, and uh, it kind of represents what they see as the, you know, I'll say distant future in terms of uh, transportation. So some of the wild things, it had these spherical wheels that allowed it to go sideways and diagonal and forward and everything. There are no buttons, no steering wheel, just kind of this massive screen that comes up from the center console and goes off into the windshield. Uh, it has this weird handhold-like device that pulses with your body and reads things and will react and make you become one with the car, presumably. It has glass doors, which I'm not sure. Um, overall, just wild, uh, but really cool to see. I don't know what that means for the future. I think they said 2050. Yeah, so we'll see how that goes. But that was one of the cool ones, certainly made a splash and certainly had a lot of people talking. The next one is the Sony Vision S. This one is very interesting. And unlike other concept cars you see here that are basically just a shell of a thing that they kind of staple together for a demo, this thing actually drives. Now they weren't giving away test drives and letting us actually get hands on with it. But the fact that they were able to make a ground up electric vehicle, meaning from scratch, not using a different thing, but really like all of their own, is really impressive and for a company that doesn't make cars, a complete shock. And uh, I think they've they probably won the uh, the biggest surprise award here, unless you know something else happens this evening. But yeah, let's go through what this Sony Vision S is all about. So first off, the design of the car is fantastic. It reminds me, similar to kind of the Porsche design language and aesthetic, really beautiful, really well done. Um, you know, kind of a surprise, honestly, from Sony who hasn't ever made a car. So yeah. Now, this one is not going to production. This is a pure concept car, but it does show that they have the ability to actually produce a vehicle. And when talking to them, they, they didn't actually make it clear that, that they were going to ever produce a car, meaning that they wanted to highlight their technology and what they're, what it, what they're able to do for electric vehicles. And you know, a lot of cars already have Sony parts in them. So the things that were impressive here were the things they're already good at. So cameras, tremendous, obviously, filming this on a Sony camera right now. There were sensors all around. Um, some of those enabled things like this advanced driver assist that would pay attention to where your eyes are, where your arm position is. So that way they can enable better driver assist. So meaning, you know, really making sure that you're paying attention, you're not falling asleep while you're on autopilot. Now, the, they also had a two 200 kilowatt motors here, which give it a fair amount of performance. I think it listed four and a half seconds or so, zero to 60, which it really isn't that impressive in, in today's terms for the higher end EVs. Uh, but again, this isn't a real production car, right? I think they're just highlighting their technology here. One thing, <laughs> maybe the, the wildest thing, and I didn't get to see this in person, but uh, they said it is a demo and I may be able to do it later. You can edit videos in the car. So their cameras obviously are one of their best product lines and uh, they're using that technology from the front and the back and everything. And they even said that you know you can essentially record stuff with those and then in the back there's a video editing suite on the screen and you can edit videos in the car, which I need that in my car, I think. I don't know. So. Uh, it really, you know, is a lot, a lot that we don't know, but a lot that was really exciting. Uh, we're unsure of the range, we're unsure of a lot of things, but overall this showcase that Sony could become an actual supplier of, let's say, a skateboard battery design, and then, you know, another automaker could take that and do something with it. So, great job to Sony. I was really impressed with this, uh, especially since, you know, contrasting say the Mercedes one which is like yeah okay cool uh, not a thing that'll ever really be made I could see this car or something very similar to it actually getting made which is really impressive so good job Sony 
The next one I found that was really interesting to me was the Fiat 120. And this is a concept car, again, not something that's coming to production, and it's a very typical kind of concept car. When you see how the seats are, how the floors are, this is not something you'd probably want to drive, right? It, it shows better than it sleeps, as you might say. And uh, the thing about it that I thought was really cool was that the 500E from Fiat is actually a really cool electric car. It's one of the cooler ones out there, and the price point is tremendous. So. If this is where the 500E is going, and they're taking some of the little things that they're having here, uh, I, I think it'll be you know a good future for Fiat in terms of their their you know fitting a very kind of niche product, but one that is certainly needed. Now they said that you can have multiple battery configurations, and that there's even um, a, a little pull-out slot underneath the driver's seat where you can put more batteries in, and those can be pulled out and recharged. Now, if you are familiar, like let's say you work at a warehouse on a forklift, this is common where you know that you drive the forklift around in the warehouse and you, you change the battery pack out you know, every, every shift or whatever, and it just keeps going. So you know, this is something Tesla talked about years ago being, being able to do with the Model S, and they had a patent for it, I believe, but didn't come to fruition. That is kind of what they're doing here, and that is what really struck me as really kind of cool, is that you imagine, you know, hey, I, I just need to, to, to get up and go right now. I don't have time to charge. I can just take my, my extra battery, which has been sitting at home charging while I've been at work, pop it in there, and I've got another 50 miles instantly. That's great. I, I really like um, that kind of a technology, and I, I wouldn't be surprised if you see some other EVs uh, start to do that. And of course, as a parent, I really loved the LED bumper uh, thing saying baby on board. That was very cute. So fitting with the Fiat kind of brand of cute and fun and all that kind of stuff, I was actually, I, I thought it was impressed. I mean, it was cool. Very much a concept car, but if that's, you know, some of those things make it into the next generation of the 500e, I'll welcome it. You know, I could see if it had in a long enough range, I could see Jenny, Jenny wanting one. So yeah, we'll see where that goes. And that brings us to today's sponsor, Climate Exchange. Climate Exchange is a nonprofit that is focusing on research, advocacy, and media support for local campaigns to pass ambitious science-based climate policy at the state level. This work is super important because it helps states reduce their overall emissions, which pooled together means as a country in the United States, the biggest polluting or one of the biggest polluting countries in the world, it helps us all just have a better future and fight climate change. So I absolutely love what they're doing and I'm thrilled that they're sponsoring today's video. And it's not just the mission that they have and all of that and how much I believe in that, it's that they also are having a raffle where you can win some pretty awesome prizes. The first place winner can get their own Tesla. They can build it, choose the model, options, et cetera, up to $140,000 in value, and they will pay the taxes worth $38,000 on that. So the winner doesn't have to, which is great because otherwise, even if you got the free car, you still have to pony up all the taxes, and that can be a lot. Now, um, this basically gets you any model fully loaded, um, excluding Cybertruck. Second place gets $10,000 in cash. Third place, $5,000 in cash. Combined pool, cash pool of over $195,000 for this raffle. So if you want to go get some raffle tickets, maybe win a Tesla, and regardless, support these guys and what they're doing, then go over to teslanomics.co slash climate exchange. I'll put a link in the description. And thanks again for sponsoring the video. So another company that unveiled something new here that I'm, I'm actually kind of excited about this, and it's a name we haven't heard in a while, and that is Fisker. So there's some history there with Tesla and Fisker, and I won't get into that. You can go look it up if you are unfamiliar, but they have a, a relationship, um, relationship, we'll call it. They unveiled the new Fisker Ocean. Now this is a crossover SUV, kind of bigger than a, a most other crossover SUVs. Uh, well, that is a really compelling vehicle uh, on paper. So it has a starting price of $37,499 or a $379 a month lease. This is before incentives, so the, the incentives can bring it down quite a bit cheaper depending on where you live. Um, and they call this the world's most sustainable vehicle. It has a full length solar roof and we've seen that before in uh, the previous Fisker sedan. And throughout it uses recycled materials. Uh, for a battery pack it looks like they're around 80 kilowatt hours, but I couldn't find the details on range or any of those other things. At 80 kilowatt hours for a bigger vehicle like this, it's hard to imagine they're going to have a great amount of range, unless they have something really magical in terms of the motors and efficiency or something there that, that we don't know about. But overall, you know, it's a pretty exciting thing that there's another vehicle in that space coming to market. So the biggest, most important 
EV at CES 2020, in my view, is the Sony Vision S. Uh, and I say that because obviously people are struggling making electric cars. Um, Tesla does it better than anyone. Um, and it's objective. I don't think any, even the people I talk to at these other companies, they all agree. Yeah, Tesla's killing it. They're doing great. Sure, they're competition, but it's more of like, you're going to step it up. We're going to step it up. It's going to be the kind of competition that benefits us consumers. So that's what I love about it. And the Sony one is interesting to me, not because it is, you know, obviously it's not coming to market. It's not a real thing, but they built a platform and they can supply other companies with that platform. So think about that. Volkswagen, BMW, Honda, Toyota, companies that basically don't have a compelling EV or any EV for that matter for some of them or even, you know, Toyota's case relatively against EVs in general, which I can't believe uh, that's going to work well into the future, but those companies are great at making cars. Objectively, right? You can't look at VW and say they don't know, don't know how to make cars. Clearly, they do. That's you can hate on them for whatever reason, but you can't you know deny that they know how to do cars. An Audi is a tremendous car. It's gorgeous. It's it's really luxurious. It's amazing. But when it comes to making an electric car, there is so much more to it than your gas car. So yeah, you can put all the right fixings inside and do all the right kind of displays and human-centered design and all that, but unless the thing can go 300 plus miles on a charge, uh, and unless you can get over-the-air updates, and unless you have great screens and you know really advanced kind of modern tech things, it's not gonna be compelling. Well, Sony does those things. And so with this car, being able to make a drivable prototype. It's really like kind of in between. I think Sean from The Verge said it best. It's like in between a concept, which is just, you know, stapled together for show and, a pr and an actual like production car. It's like a prototype. So it's basically a working functioning car, but not one they're going to make. So imagine if VW or, you know, which owns Audi and all these other uh, big brands or Toyota or Honda or BMW or these guys come to Sony and say, hey, we are having a hard time here with the uh, you know, I mean, even Mercedes, right? The EQC being delayed again and it having very lackluster range. The Porsche Taycan getting 201 miles EPA. I mean, just, just when it comes to the batteries and the powertrains, everyone is really struggling except Tesla. And that's why they're so far ahead. So if Sony can be that for them, say, here's the skateboard, maybe we'll have a couple different configurations, then I think we would have a huge lift in competition in the market because that would be where all of us consumers win. We would have, you know, a, a, a VW this and an Audi that, and they would have, you know, similar specs to what you get from Tesla currently. And if, and if they can catch up, if the, the rest of the auto industry can use Sony and kind of springboard on this technology to get to where Tesla is at from just the specs alone, we'll have a, a very bright, very electric future. So that's why I think the Sony is the biggest one that was announced. And I really hope that all of those predictions and things I have there, uh, there come to fruition. So we'll see. Stay tuned, because obviously that's what we're going to be following along here. And if you're new, don't forget, when you free the data, your mind will follow. I'll see you guys back here in the next one.